Hello everyone. This is just going to be a quick video. I know I've been doing a lot of a lot of longer videos. One of my um, curly hairs molted uh, actually just yesterday, so I'm going to rehouse him because he's um, getting pretty big for this enclosure. While I'm rehousing him, I'm just going to take you through and show you how I set up a sling enclosure. He's not really a sling, he's kind of more of a juvenile, but I'll just, while I'm at it, I'm just going to show you how I set them up. So here I have coconut fi uh, coconut fiber. Um, you can get it at like PetSmart or something like that. You know, a big bag of it. It's the, the cocoa husk stuff. I don't know, they call it a bunch of different names, but. So I just have a bunch of that in here. And this is a, this is a clear deli container. I don't know what size, but I mean, whatever. So, I uh, put some cocoa fiber in here, and I put a little bit of water in there, and mixed it up. That's what you saw me doing, I was mixing it up, um, to make it a little bit moist. With a guy this small, you probably still need it a little bit moist, but not like soaping wet. You don't want any of them soaping wet. But this guy isn't going to have a water dish until he's about three inches or so. So you need to keep that moist so that he has uh, something to drink from, which uh, I'll show you here. I'm actually going to miss the sides too because they drink from the sides of the container. So if you just take like a regular water sprayer and just kind of give it a little spray. One second. Also, another thing that you want to make sure that you do is poke holes in the side. I actually just had to do that because I forgot that there was only a couple tiny holes. But you need to poke holes in the side here so that there's ventilation. Um, and for slings, I, I don't like to poke holes in the top, uh, the, the lid, just because you want to keep humidity in. Because they're so tiny and fragile and they dry out a lot quicker than adults. So you want to make sure that you have some kind of humidity in there. And the uh, water that you spray in there is going to last a lot longer. Then, say if you had like dry substrate and ventilation on top. This is this is the basic setup for a juvenile slash sling. You know, the slings you're just going to keep in these little pill jars. Until they're big enough, like this guy, that he needs something just a tiny bit bigger. Um, what I'm also going to do, since there's room, I'm actually going to take a toilet paper roll or a paper towel roll or something like that and I'm going to cut it in half and cut off a little section where I can uh, put it in here and uh, make a little hide for him because here he has a burrow. This enclosure is not really going to allow him to burrow just because it's so shallow. There's not enough room for him. So give me one second and I'm going to cut this up and then we're going to put that in there. Okay, so I have um, some wet, wet sphagnum moss. Now this stuff holds moisture really well. So you just want to give it a couple spritz um, and make sure it's, it's wet, but you can't squeeze water out of it. So we're just going to kind of set this off to one side here. And he can go to it at his leisure and get water and, you know, he can... Crawl in it and do whatever whatever you want. So so I have this piece of toilet paper roll here that I just cut out. And uh, it's a nice arc so he can get in there and uh, make a burrow. So just kind of shove it in there. Put it in, <clears throat> in one side of the container and kind of hollow it out. Push down inside and hollow it out. Make it a little bit more burrow-like for him. I mean, he's going to do what he wants with it, but just kind of make make it so that he knows that that's a burrow. So, <clears throat> this is a perfect little setup. Now, when you're extracting a tarantula, a sling or a juvenile or whatever from one of these pill jars and they're crammed into the bottom like this, he's hiding down here, uh, when they're crammed into the bottom like this you kind of have no choice but to scoop out this this um, extra substrate on the top and just kind of fish them out. Yeah, so just kind of scoop this out. Make sure you don't crush your tarantula, especially if they just molted. Do not crush him. Okay, 
but this guy <clears throat> is a master of escaping down his tunnel so I really have no choice but to kind of scoop everything out he's not going to be happy about it but at some point he'll he'll enjoy his new setup at some point Okay, so I have it scooped out enough that I can probably fish him out. Um, you can see him down there, over here. Maybe you can, I don't know. Yeah, he's right there. So, what you're going to do is take your paintbrush and you're going to kind of nudge him until he comes out. And then hopefully, you know, your end result will be that he goes in there. Okay. So let's just kind of, come on little buddy, there you go, there, see, now he's starting to come out, and yeah, he's really kicking hers, come on little buddy, come on, there you go. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, he's just freshly molted. I pulled the molt out yesterday. And he is bright blue. It's crazy how how these guys' colors change when they're molted. There we go. Okay, so there's our successful transfer. I was actually expecting that he was going to bolt, but he didn't. So, okay, there we go. Hopefully, hopefully he enjoys that. It's a lot bigger than his last one. He'll probably stay in there until his next molt, and then I'll give him a bigger one. So, all right, I'm going to take some pictures, and thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.